Hello, I'm Ray. Today we've got an even more affordable flagship killer than the OnePlus 5, with excellent build quality and top-of-the-line specifications. All we know, it is the Xiaomi Mi 6. Let's have a look. Yep, the one here is the maxed out 120 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM, 430 quid or 550 dollars flagship killer, with a Snapdragon 835 under the hood. But that's a big but. Despite the name flagship killer, it's got a four-sided 3D curved ceramic back. And the good news is, all those amazing hardware is packed inside this tiny little one-hand manageable chassis with a 5.15 inches screen. It's incredibly smooth to hold, just like phones with dual glass and aluminum frame. However, the ceramic back gives it extra weight and sturdiness in hands. To be honest, in terms of build quality, it is indeed impressive. Look at how precise not only the glass panel meets the aluminum frame, but also the ceramic back. Speaking of the back, the camera lenses are highlighted with gold-colored rings, which match the Mi logo. The volume rockers and power button are also perfectly placed and crafted, with satisfactory feedback. Even small details like the fingerprint sensors got a reflective chamfered edges surrounding it. And last but not least, the glossy polished aluminum frame completes that shiny, flashy look of the Mi 6. It might not be the best looking phone out there, but it's definitely one of the best built phones ever, even in premium flagship standard. Back on the fingerprint sensor, it's got the same design as the Huawei Mate 9 Pro and the OnePlus 5. That said, it also doubles as a home button, but not clickable while the hardware navigation buttons have also got the same layout or design as the Huawei Mate 9 Pro and the OnePlus 5 again. The two capacitive keys are programmable and swappable. Not only can we swap the position of the back and the recent apps button, but also give them long press shortcuts. But the selection of shortcuts limited to just launching Google Now, killing the current app and showing the recent apps. That's kinda disappointing. The good news is, it's got NFC. LED notification light is also there right at the top right hand corner. It's also one of the very few flagships to feature an hour blast of a remote control. USB Type-C port with USB on-the-go support is also a must, but the microphone's mediocre. Unfortunately, it also lacks a microSD card slot. You will have to get yourself enough storage at the first place. But generally speaking, the Mi 6 is a piece of incredibly well-built artwork. The design might be uninspiring, the 3D curved ceramic back however is out of this world, with almost all the hardware we need except a microSD card slot. I'm sure you will be pleased with that build quality and hardware. Moving on to performance and features. The Mi 6 runs MIUI 8 out of the box, on top of Android 7.1. It is buttery smooth thanks to the 1080p screen and top-of-the-line specifications. But it lacks several features stock Android Nougat packs, including the expandable notification preview and multi-windows, or split-screen, unless you are flashing the latest developer ROM version onto the Mi 6. Otherwise, you will have to wait until the MIUI 9 update. The interface also lacks a proper app drawer, and those icons are way too colourful and childish. The good news is, customization on MIUI 8 is wonderful, as expected. Not only has it got literally a dozen of transition animations, but also tons of personalization settings inside the settings menu. Like we can choose between show or not to show the notification icons, and a lot more stuff that you may not touch in your lifetime. In-house features like the warm reminder before entering the one-handed mode, Second space, in other words, dual system, it splits the system into two completely separated, isolated environments. You won't be able to access files and apps in System 2 when you're in System 1 neither, with a dedicated password or fingerprint profile for each of the systems. You are basically using two phones, but on the same piece of hardware. Interesting. Together with dual app capability in System 1, you can literally log into three Facebook accounts on one single device. That's insane. Other user-friendly gestures including double tap to wake and the not-so-useful floating dock are also there. Features-wise, you won't be disappointed by Xiaomi.
Same for the performance, rocking the latest and greatest Snapdragon 835 processor with 6GB of RAM and ROM storage based on UFS 2.1 technology, also thanks to the features-packed but arguably well-optimized user interface, the music flies in day-to-day -day navigation. Other than just talking according to the standard app's opening speed test, the Mi 6 launched all the apps in just around 89 seconds, not as quick as the OnePlus 5 and the Mate 9 on the Android territory, and the iPhone still the king in terms of speed. Multitasking on the Mi 6 also top-notch, it easily kept all the apps in memories, while app switching was blazing fast without even a millisecond of delay or lag. Generally speaking, you can expect similar performance to the Mi Note 2 or other mainstream flagships from the Mi 6. While also thanks to the 1080p screen and the Adreno 540 GPU, it kills all the games on Play Store right now and probably in the near future. When it comes to performance and features, the Mi 6 delivers comparable experience to phones that double the price. Now the cameras. Dual cameras definitely the trend in 2017. The Mi 6 no exception. It shares the same logic as the iPhone 7 Plus, the OnePlus 5, the P10 and more. The secondary lens is like a telephoto lens. It's got 2x optical zoom, but it works only under broad daylight. While the bokeh or portrait mode is also identical to the OnePlus 5, originated from the iPhone. Now the Mi 6 packs a dual 12 megapixels camera module, but the primary lens got an f1.8 aperture, pixel size at 1.25 microns and 4-axis optical image stabilization. The zoom lens, however, features a much narrower f2.6 aperture, smaller pixels at 1 micron, and lacks optical image stabilization. Let's take a look at the portrait mode first. It does blur out the background effectively, but it's far from perfect. The main objects like isolated from the rest of the image, while the bokeh effect is poorly implemented, ghost effect is everywhere. This one looks amazing from distance. But once we've zoomed in, the main objects again, like it wasn't there in reality, but photoshopped. The concrete wall in front of the old lady is just as sharp as the main object, which doesn't make sense at all, optically. This one's the most natural shot out of the bunch. The main object is crystal clear, but the dynamic range is far from perfect. In the end, I ended up shooting with a standard mode, but on the zoom lens, that 57mm focal length is just perfect for street photography, even though the portrait mode isn't all that useful. It does a really great job in creating the feel of a DSLR camera. The question is, how about lifting the clarity? On the left, here we've got an image taken with the primary camera. While on the right, the details are far sharper, optical zooms confirmed working. This set of photos is an interesting one that the image taken with the primary lens a bit on the reddish side, but greenish on the telephoto lens. The one taken with a primary lens has again got a reddish tint to it, and the one taken with a telephoto lens has got a greenish tint. At the end of the day, image quality is decent, with reasonable amount of details, yet dynamic range is below average without HDR. But this HDR mode boosts not only the dynamic range, but also the color saturation. It makes all the shots even more over-exaggerated than those taken with Samsung's flagships. Move on to low-light performance. It's expected to be decent, but not exactly a flagship killer, as it features an f1.8 aperture, with optical image stabilization and 1.25 micron-sized pixels. Not the best on papers, but better than the OnePlus 5. However, the image quality in reality is greenier and less saturated than expected, especially in extreme low-light environment. Digital noise has dominated the image while details in shadows are mushy. Extreme low-light photography would be one of the trade-offs for saving those hundreds of dollars or pounds. Midnight. 
if we compare that to the exact premium, we can tell the image on the left is way sharper, especially those waves. It is also way smoother and more vivid. The front shooters also disappointing, low-light performance mediocre as a whole. Generally speaking, the Mi 6 captures vivid and sharp images under most lighting conditions, but it doesn't hold up in extreme low-light environments. You are not getting the best smartphone camera with this price tag. Multimedia experience fortunately is respectable. With a 5.15 inches 1080p IPS display that is fairly well calibrated, with reasonable and natural colors. The white balance, however, is a bit on the greenish side. You might find Sony's, Samsung's, and HTC's panels a lot sharper, with wider color gamut. But the Mi 6 offers great firing angle and a respectable 1300 to 1 contrast ratio. However, 5.15 inches might be too small for gaming. Do keep in mind that the Mi 6 is a one-handed phone. I don't mean phone. The good news is, the Mi 6 features a dual speaker setup. One takes up the receiver on the front and the other one on the bottom side. They are a bit tiny and weak in base, but generally speaking, video watching and gaming experience are better on a phone with dual speakers. The lack of a 3.5mm headphone jack, though, is disappointing. Xiaomi claimed internal space is precious, and probably they're not able to squeeze all the dual camera module. The larger than before 3350mAh 3, battery and a headphone jack. This is kinda understandable for phones with smaller footprint. But you'll have to carry your Type-C to 3.5mm jack converter all the time. Last but not least, the battery life. Xiaomi squeezed a 3350mAh battery into this tiny chassis. It is obviously for phones with 5.5 inches screen or above, but not 5.2 inches or below. Battery life is expected to be great. According to the standard battery life test though, after 4 hours of YouTube videos playback at maximum screen brightness, 31% of the battery left. It's mediocre and it's on the lower end, but the music got a brighter than average screen. The second round of the test would tell the whole image better. After one hour of YouTube videos playback, one hour of Facebook serving, and an hour of Clash Royale gameplay at 50% brightness, 65% of the battery was left after three hours of media consumption. That is impressive. Still, it lags behind when it's compared to the OnePlus 5, Mate 9 Pro and some other phones with AMOLED displays. With Quick Charge 3.0 to complete the package, battery life on the Mi 6 might not be the best out there, but it's definitely great. Wrap the things up. The Xiaomi Mi 6 is incredibly well built, especially the ceramic variant. The design might be uninspiring, but the build quality is out of this world. It also packs all the latest and greatest hardware and delivers top-notch processing power and user experience in terms of smoothness. The MIUI 8 interface, the lack of a 3.5mm headphone jack, and the camera that doesn't hold up in extreme low-light environments could be the trade-offs getting the Mi 6 instead of a proper flagship. MIUI 8, however, is feature-specced as expected while the music captures vivid and promising images under good lighting. It's also got a dual speaker setup, a decent display, and great battery life. If the OnePlus 5 still out of your budget, then give it a try. So there we have it, the Xiaomi Mi 6. Hope you all enjoyed watching this video, like it if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe. There are also two more videos here for you to watch next. See you next time.